Hi, this is Gail with Beta Jewelry Diva, and today we are going to use our wire weaving on a project. This is going to be our toggle clasp, and as you can see, we're using two wires. We're using a basket weave. Now, I will demonstrate how to do the basket weave in this video, but if you want to have a lot more in depth, as long as well as seeing a bunch of other two wire weaves, um, I'm going to <laughs> post a link somewhere, and you can see that video too. But today we are going to be making this and I'll also show you real quick how to make um, like the little t-bar class part of it. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know if you want to see more wire weaving videos. Um, this is just a simple project, but I can get a little bit more um, interesting, I guess. <laughs> if you'd like me to do some more uh, complicated or whatever you want to call them projects. Anyway, this is what we're doing today and let's get started with the supplies. You will need some 20 gauge wire, some 28 gauge wire, a small piece of 16 gauge wire. You will need a pair of pliers. Um, I happen to be using some chain nose. You can use whatever you like. Um, a pair of round nose pliers. You will need a cutter and a dowel. This one is about 7 16 You can use any size you like. And then a nail file. Let's get started. I'm starting with about 6 inches of this uh, 20 gauge wire. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my round nose pliers and just bend this. So what I'm doing is just trying to make a, a U basically. And then I'm going to squeeze in a little bit at the ends. So I have a U. Now these don't have to be exactly matching at the bottom, that's no problem. Um, but what you do need to make sure is that they're pretty parallel to each other. Alright, so we've got that and now we're going to get some wire. Now this is my 28 gauge wire. I have about four feet of it. Um, I like to err on the side of caution and have a little too much. And I'm using some antiqued colored copper wire, so you can see it a little bit better against the bright copper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do some basket weave. So I'm going to go around this top twice. So you can see I've gone around it twice. And then I'm going under. So I'm going under this one around and for this one I'm going to go around it five times so one two three four and five so it looks like this now don't worry about this one kind of looking wonky off there that's that's okay we'll take care of that later so now I want to go ahead and get these apart about, oh, I don't know, they're maybe a quarter inch apart. I'm going under, so I'm going under this one, over, and then I'm going to do this twice. So I've gone over it twice. Now I'm going to go under this wire again. So this is just the basket weave, and I'm going to do this once again five times. One, two, three, four, five. And it looks like this so far. I know, doesn't look like much at the moment, but it will get better. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do about an inch and a quarter to two inches, or excuse me, an inch and three quarters to maybe just about two inches of this all the way down. So I'm just going to do basket weaves. Again, one side has only two loops and the other side has five loops. I've done just shy of two inches of this and now here's where my dowel comes in handy. I'll take my dowel and I'm just going to bend my wire around it. So I'm really bending it so that it about meets up with itself. So it looks like this. It's um, not, you know, terribly tight against it. And it looks kind of strange here, but here's what we're going to do. 
And I really like to do this with a pair of pliers that I've dipped in some of the tool magic, but it is not necessary. I just like to be gentle on my wire. Now I'm trying to flatten this out some. And what this does is by bending it around that dowel first, it helps it to keep a more rounded shape more easily. I'm probably not explaining it very well, but it's easier to get the rounded shape rather than just bending it yourself. This is really important. The side that has the two wires wrapped is the side that has to go on the inside. So don't put it on the outside, put it on the inside. And I'm just moving it around some. All right. So I've got it looking like this so far. And what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and put these wires through this loop. To do that, I need to cut them just a bit. So I'm going to take my trusty pair of wire cutters and I'm going to, I don't know, cut it about, oh, not quite a half an inch. And that'll make it easy for me to put through this loop. So there, I've got it coming through the loop. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take my other set of pliers and I'm going to start wrapping these around. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking it and wrapping. And do not rush this part of it because if you do, it's going to end up turning up wonky. So you can see that I'm rushing a bit right now and they look a little funky. So what I'm going to do is slow down just a shade. Now you can see on the back it looks like this. Now there's way too much wire on the back right now. Um, but what I'm going to do is cut this a little bit more. So I've got my flush cutters and I've got my flush side towards, towards the, the loop. And I'm cutting off both about the same. So it looks like that now. And I'm going to go ahead with the innermost wire. The one, this is the one that has the, the two wraps. I'm going to use this one first. I'm going to tighten it. So you can see it's tightening and it's going through this side. I'm going to do the same thing with the other. Now, I really don't want it to show on this side, but I want to get it nice and tight so I can cut this little extra off in a, in a minute. So just go ahead, take your time, and make sure that you've got a nice, a nice loop. Then if you've got a little too much extra wire like I have on this one where it's showing up on the other side, just go ahead and nip it off. Okay, now here's the back now that I've nipped it off just a little bit more. So feel it, make sure that you can't feel anything sharp. Now we've got these last couple of wires to deal with. These are the 28 gauge. And to deal with them, you could go ahead and wrap it around the 20 gauge wire, but I like to go ahead and secure it a little bit more. I'm gonna get this long one out of the way for a second. So we'll go ahead and deal with this one. So you can see that it's coming off the top of this. What I'm going to do is I am going to sew this on. So you can see now I've got it coming through the wires. So I'm coming in between some of them, taking it up over, going through the loop again, so basically what I'm doing really is sewing this on. And I only need to do it maybe twice. So actually I think I've got enough. So I'm going to take my pl or my cutters and cut. 
I'm going to do the same thing on this side and I'll be right back. Okay, now that I've got it all cut off, I'm again rubbing my fingers on the other side to make sure that I have feel nothing sharp. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the, the roundness. I mean, is it symmetrical or not? Or does it fall off your hand? <laughs> this actually looks fairly symmetrical. And if I want to, I can take the top of this and round it up just a little bit more so that the top loop looks like this. So that is all it really takes in order to make this. Here's the one that we just made. So let's see some other options. Another option is doing it like this. And what I did is I, instead of wrapping the wire through this loop, I wrapped it around. So that's another option. So that's how I ended it, by wrapping it around. Here's one that is done in a type of silver. And actually this is, I think it's like para-wire or something. But in this one, instead of wrapping these wires around this one, the closest loop, I put it up through, up through the loop, and wrapped it to the other side. So you can see that this wire is coming up over this side. So that's another idea. Another one I have is where I went ahead and I came through the loop and then I just wrapped it around this side. And I made my loop um, go to the back. So my loop is facing sideways instead of facing up. And let's see. Now, here's something that you probably do not want to do. <laughs> Unless you are making earrings. I did this out of 22 gauge wire. And let me tell you, it flipped and flopped all over the place. I mean, this stuff is so easy to bend out of shape that, um, yeah. Do not use 22 gauge wire for this unless you're using 22 gauge something very stiff, but 22 gauge copper does not work. And then here's another one that is that I, I made like slightly farther apart. So there's this one. Now let's talk about clasps. Um, we need the toggle end to the ring. So I've got something like this and you can see that all it is, is a piece of my wire, and I take it, and actually I'm going to cut this to about an inch and a half, so, so I don't flip-flop it all over the place. And I get it between my round nose pliers, and then I just do this. So it looks like this, just a little on the wonky side, which is where the other pliers come in handy to, you know, snug them up. So if they're a little off, I can either go ahead and cut this side because it looks like it's a little long, or if I don't want to cut it, I can just put my, um, my pliers through again and press the long side down some and bring the short side up. So that'll even it out some. So that's your toggle. Now what I did on this one is I took my bench block and my little hammer and I hammered it. It makes it a whole lot stronger. So this toggle is not going anywhere. Now, how do you know what size of your bar to make? This one would go well with this particular one. And how you want to judge it is you want to see, yikes, when you have it long ways like this, since it's kind of a pear shape, you don't want the toggle to fall through because even though you're going to wear it like this, if it, if it moves up like this, you don't want it to fall through and, you know, have your 
bracelet or necklace or whatever fall off. So there's that one. Now this one, as I look at it, would it make it to this one? Uh, if I hammered it, it's going to get a little bit longer because when you hammer it, it forces the metal out some. So I probably could get away with it if I hammered it. But all by itself, this is really kind of iffy as far as length. This one would work with this one. So you can see there's plenty of room. There, I mean, it's not going to fall out. But personally, I just like to go ahead and hammer the ends of it. Now, and that comes to my bit about the uh, nail file. You know, you can buy files and everything, metal files and whatnot. Me, I just like to use these things. <laughs> I mean, really, when it comes to rounding edges of wire like this, your nail file works great. <laughs> Don't need to buy expensive stuff. So there we go. We have a T-bar. We have the toggle. And now you can go ahead and do all kinds of things with this. I actually am going to do a project using the toggle and the bar. Uh, watch for that. I hope to have it up within about a week or so. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed it today. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. I will look forward to seeing you again later. This is Gail from Beta Jewelry Diva saying have yourself a beautiful day. Bye.